Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the SPF3 flight controller. Now this is the, I would say, standard flight controller, the most default, the, the one just found everywhere. Um, and usually people who are starting in this hobby might pick one of these up. And I just want to give a quick basic overview of how it works and what these mean and what this means and what goes here and what goes there. Just a quick, maybe under five minute tutorial just to get you going so you don't have to just scour the internet and watch people making it super complicated and it's really not. So let's get started. Now let's start with the bottom here. You have eight numbers. One through eight. What are, what are these? This basically just means you could have up to eight motors on this flight controller. Um, most of the time, if you're building a quadcopter, you're not gonna need eight motors because it's a quadcopter, it's four motors. So you would just need one, two, three, and four. Now, one, two, and three, and four, we, I'm going to be discussing as if we're going to use beta flight on this also. So let me explain this to you. Now there's a specific orientation of where the motors should be placed for the quadcopter to fly correctly. Uh, without messing around with any, you know, command line commands and, and other stuff. So we just want to make it as simple as possible. So, one. Okay. So this row here is the signal. This is the part where, uh, that talks to your ESC and tells it, tells it to tell the motor what to do. Now, we have positive here and we have ground. Now, most ESCs nowadays don't come with a positive, so you really more likely going to ignore this part here and most of them do come with ground so you would just ground them here now you can ground them anywhere along this line it's totally fine and if you bridge them it's totally fine also because this is just ground and same goes for positive you have to do some stuff on positive here and if you need a ground uh, bridging them it's totally fine just don't bridge the positive and negative or a signal and a positive or two signals together <laughs> then you'll have a lot of problems so Let's talk about the orientation of the motors. So we have motor one. Motor one would be on the back right, okay? Now motor two would be right here on the top right. Motor three on the back left. And motor four on the top left here. So that's how you would run your wires. And that would be it really for this part. That's, that's all it is really, there's nothing else to it. Now, let's move to let's move up here to the arrow. Okay, so what does the arrow mean? Now, out of the box, it would tell you to place this in your drone, just like this, where this arrow would be pointing to the front, because that's how it comes out of the box. Now, if you ended up putting it like this, your quadcopter will never fly if you don't do some configurations. And it's a very simple configuration. So, let's just take a look at this. So, right now, I prefer usually to set it like this so I can access the USB um, a lot easier. Now, how do you know how do I set this orientation or how do I configure this? It's very simple. So um, right now, let's just say we set it like this. We would have to add a yaw offset of 90 degrees. Now where did I get that 90 degrees from? So let's just talk about circles basically. So a circle is 360 degrees. All right, and this is a square which has four sides, so it could be placed in four s different ways, really. Okay, so now we take 360 and divide it by four, we get 90. So now this is zero, okay, and this only works on clockwise rotation. So if we change it like this, zero plus 90, that's 90, and if we Rotate it like this, 90 plus 90, that's 180. And then if we rotate it like this, 180 plus 90 is 270. And if we go back here, it's 360, which is zero, but just stick to zero. You're better off because it's easier, really. So let me show you where to change this in beta flight. All right, guys, now we're in beta flight. So what you want to do is we want to go to the configuration tab on the left. We click on that and we go to board and sensor alignment okay now we have all this gyro alignment accelerometer magnometer forget all this just leave this default you don't don't care about that now what we need to look at is the yaw degrees so this will be the offset so if the arrow is pointing to the front of the quad then it would be zero 
But let's say I wanted to put in my quadcopter like this, which is the arrow pointing to the left, so I could access the USB from the left. So what I would do is I would add a 90 degree yaw offset right there. Okay, that's it. And now let's just say for some reason I wanted the arrow to point to the back of the quadcopter. So what I would do here is just 90 plus 90, which is 180. And now if I wanted the arrow to the point to the left, then I would add another 90 to the 180 and I would be with 270 degrees. And if I wanted to go back here, it would be 360 or zero, but just stick to zero. We would put that to zero. And then what you do is you would go save, which is on the bottom left, save and reboot, and you're good to go. All right, so we finished talking about the arrow. Now let's talk about the UART ports. Now, nowadays it's becoming more, um, people are using SBUS more often and IBUS and, and all that good stuff. Uh, PPM is something a bit different. I will explain that later, but we're gonna just discuss the UARTs and how to set up you know, an SBUS or an IBUS receiver. So you have these things called UARTs. Now, some flight controls have two, some might have three, some might have four, some I don't know, a lot more. This one comes with three. We have UART one, two, and three. Now, don't let this get, you know, don't, don't let this worry you, it's very simple. Now, UART one is usually connected to the USB, okay? So think of these as basically just USBs, okay? But they just look different. You just put wires through them, all right? So UART one, which is usually connected directly to the USB, um, I would try to avoid that. So we're gonna go with UART three here, all right? For example, now you have ground positive TX and RX. Now what is TX and RX? Very simple. TX means that the flight, this is where the flight controller will transmit data to. So this is where it will send data to something else. RX, very simple, which means this is where the flight controller would receive data from something else. That's it. So let's just say we just brought an S bus receiver, okay? And we placed it right here. And we have three wires. We have uh, ground, positive, and this other wire, okay? Now, it's obvious your receiver is going to need power, so you'd give it ground and you'd give it positive. Now, who's going to be talking to who? It's going to be your receiver telling your flight controller what to do because you're the one who's going to be telling your receiver what the flight controller should be doing. So the flight controller, the wire would go into the receive. Now, I'm not talking about telemetry and all that stuff. We're just, just a basic SBUS connection. And so the wire would go to the R because it would need to receive the data from the receiver to tell the motors what to do. And I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up. So for example, we just use UR3, we set the RX, the positive and the negative. Let's take a look in beta flight how we would configure that. All right guys, now we're in beta flight. What you wanna do is you wanna to look to the left and then find the ports tab. So we go to the ports tab. Now, what I wanna show you first, I just had it kind of already done. Um, so we used UART3 and here's UART3. Now some common sense would possibly tell you just to click this on and save and you're good to go. But no, that's, that's completely wrong. What you want to do is actually keep this disabled and you would want to enable the serial RX which is just receive off serial. And that's what these ports are called, serial. So we want the serial RX which is receive and then we just save it on the bottom right. Save and reboot. It'll save and reboot. And then we would want to go next to configuration. And then we want to scroll down to receiver. And here's receiver. And then what you want to do is you want to say serial based receiver. And then see, there's SBUS. You know, you also have IBUS. It's the same thing for SBUS and IBUS. So we would say SBUS. And then we'd go to the bottom right, save and reboot. And if you're bound and everything, then everything should work just perfect, really. So let's see what else we got to talk about here. All right, let's say now you want to add a buzzer. So the buzzer port is right here. Very obvious, look, buzz. 
So it obviously means the buzzer port. So which one's the ground and which one's the positive? So you kind of follow this line. So here's ground, here's positive. And usually, most of the time, ground is usually square on a lot of electronics. See, like here, see, it's a square, it's a square. But here's a, it's not. So, yeah, this is just an exception here. So, you would just add the buzzer right here, and you have a buzzer. Now, there's something called VBAT. Now, what is VBAT? VBAT is basically the multimeter of your flight controller. All it does is it measures your battery voltage. Now, if we added a buzzer, what we could tell it to do is, if my battery hits 14 volts, uh, start beeping, start buzzing, um, because you don't have an OSD or you don't have telemetry and all that stuff. Now, it usually comes like this, and if you look in the bottom, it has holes. And what I like to do is actually I just get pliers, and, and this doesn't do any, this doesn't mess anything up, and just break it off, and that's it. Now you can just use the holes and solder it in. You could use that plug, but it's just it's very annoying. So you can do this also just like this and you're totally fine. So so that's for VBAT. Alright guys, I think that's gonna conclude it for this video now. And I really do help hope I really help someone out there who has um who's been kind of lost in this kind of thing and um just helped you out a little bit and that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope it helped you. And um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And that's it, guys. See you. Take care.